Hello, friends. I'm enjoying a nice cup of, cup, literally a cup of water. Mm. It's a good time. It's a good time. How you doing, everyone? What's going on? How are things? If you're watching this on VOD, I usually stall for a little bit so we can get all those live friends in. So we can talk about that hot electronic triple. Uh, welcome to Noclip headquarters and this beautiful E3. We're sitting by the fire with our feet up, relaxing. And I just saw a cyberpunk about, um, about two hours ago. So I said I'd talk a little bit about it. Thanks for Fallout Docs, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Same place as last year, yes my friend, exact same place. Um, I don't know when they're gonna show up publicly, um, but I am going to tell you everything that I saw during my presentation today. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna ramble off kind of everything that I saw, um, and uh, at the end I'll take some questions. If you guys have any, which I'm sure you will. Um, so first of all, we went into a, a room. I was uh, myself and Dennis, uh, my buddy Dennis, I do uh, or did a podcast with. Um, we play a lot of PUBG together. Um, it was uh, ironically enough, we were sitting beside Brendan, player unknown green. So the three of us Irish lads had a great chat, um, and uh, and uh, we sat down and kept our mouths shut for the presentation, which was about I want to say it was about forty minutes. It could have been an hour. I don't know. But forty minutes at least of gameplay. It was played live in front of us, which I actually did not realize. It felt, it ran so smooth and felt so smooth that it felt like it was canned, um, uh, but uh, but it wasn't. But obviously, it was a pretty scripted demo. It kind of told us a lot about um, about the game. So Cyberpunk had explained this. So it's it's first person, but it reminds me of like first person. Um, it kind of rem reminds me of first person GTA where the world is obviously a lot bigger than like linear um, linear levels. It's set in a city. They said there were something like six different main districts that were all sort of different parts of the city. The main part we saw was in a sort of a, um, I don't know, residential district. It was like a tower block. A large, a large part of it um, uh, felt like almost kind of like the tower block from Dredge, kind of that type of thing, where it was like the big internal atrium the whole way down. There was like shops and stuff. Um, you seem to be able to explore quite a lot of it, but again, this demo was pretty, um, uh, you know, well run, so who knows. That, that was the big issue. I couldn't really get a sense of how much of an open world it was, um, especially because the, the, the levels and the missions that they picked up on, they were sort of like doing part one of one of them and then scooting over to part one of another quest and then part two of the other quest. They were kind of daisy chaining it um, in this really interesting way, which kind of reminds me of The Witcher where you kind of leave one because you're close to another one and you do a bit of that and you move on to the next. Um, but ostensibly it, it plays like a first person game. It kind of remind, reminds me of the original, this is going to sound like a bad comparison, but the original demo for Rage where there was an, like an open world section and then you went into like a market section and there was like a gentleman with like a very good facial animation talking to you about it. Um, so the, the, it had like detail on a mass level, like a GTA does, but it has detail on a micro level, like a lot of other first person sort of games do. Um, in terms of like the combat and walking around the spaces, you get this weird vibe where it kind of feels like an arcane game or maybe a deus ex, where like you can go in all guns blazing, you can go in, you know, you can find, um, you know, uh, like little areas to like stealth your way in and stuff like that. But less, less of the sort of systematic way that you see in those games where it's very much like this is the stealth thing or this is the this or the, in every level there's a hack and a thing and a thing and a thing. It didn't, it didn't feel like that. It felt like more like, oh, there's like three, two or three ways to like do a bit of this in this bit, in this part. And the gum combat was fucking bananas. I'm like a big fan of evolution in the first person genre. I've been playing FPS my whole life. I love games that try and do things differently, uh, like Titanfall or something. This game has crazy stuff. So they had, a bunch of interesting weapons. Um, some of them, there was like homing bullets where they like tagged on someone and then shot away and they went around. They had bullets that shot through walls. Um, they had uh, bullets that ricocheted off walls and you could see where they were going to ricochet. So they were shooting behind people and bouncing and hitting them in the back, which looked absolutely nuts. Um, uh, the lady in that original trailer that has like the weird arms, the player jumped up, like wall ran on a wall and then stuck one of her arms, it was a female character, you can choose your character to start, stuck her arms into a wall and like used it to like survey the sort of the area underneath. 
uh, which was pretty amazing. Yeah, mantis blades, yeah. And when she was up there, in the demo, when she was up there, she looked down and with this, there was a part of the demo where she went and basically got like an augmentation done for her hand so she could grab the gun better and an augmentation for her eye, which basically gave her a heads up display thing where you could zoom in and scan people and shit like that. And she scanned one of the guys and hacked his gun so it wouldn't fire and then jumped down, stabbed the first guy and then the other one's like, click, 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 click. Um, and uh, uh, then then killed that one. I actually think she chopped his head off with, uh, with both of those mantis blades. Um, there was an outdoor area where you were driving a car and it was like a straight up like car chase shooting like you grab the wheel I'm going to shoot at the the front of the car and then what was interesting in that situation was that they clicked a button to click back into third person so like it was like a GTA style you were like driving the car around the city um, was there options for third person only during driving not during the rest of the game like I totally get why you would not want to play this game in third person like third person games are generally open world games where you don't tend to go indoors very lot and a large part of this game is like the outdoors but a large part of this game is indoors so like imagine playing like I didn't like if I'm I'm not a massive fan of the third person Deus Ex thing because you get there's a lot of problems like that um there's a lot of problems with getting around the the the, uh, the the levels that way, so it totally makes sense. It's first person, I think, when I when I saw it. Uh, there's a lot of gore. There was a lot of gore. Um, was there any music ra radio stations? Yeah, there was some fun music. They talked about some of the like they had, like real world artists. I think that were playing in there as well. Um, it was pretty gory. Somebody shot someone and like a leg came off. One dude at one stage. Oh, it was so funny. The guy he like aimed for his kneecaps or something. It was really weird. And when he did it, I went, Jesus Christ, vocally. And then the guy in the game was like holding his like leg, which had got him blown off and was screaming, Jesus Christ. And it was like, it was kind of like, I wouldn't say like Soldier of Fortune levels of gore, but it was pretty up there. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, character creation looked really good. It was, um, male and female. It was interesting. It was male and female. There's no class system. So you don't pick your classes or anything. Um, but it was male or female. And then you got to pick their backstory, which looked really cool. Um, you could like say like, you know, they said that it was like super early, this stuff that like, they're gonna change a lot of it, but it was like, uh, oh, you, uh, um, uh, if you're watching, the, the, you look at this menu and it's like, oh, you can say like, oh, I'm, I'm, why are you coming back to the city? And what's your motivation? It was like, what, a couple of questions you asked that kind of filled in your backstory, which was pretty cool. I kind of like that. And you can pick male or female and um, I'm trying to think what else. They said they didn't have a class system, but like, the way in which XP gets doled out or stuff. They have this thing called cred. It's like, it's, I'm not sure if it's their XP or if it's a different form of XP, but they have this thing called cred, which is basically like, you have like, uh, your XP goes up faster or whatnot. And the, 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 the cred was based on like the jacket that you wore, like you, the clothes you were wearing. Um, your character has like an apartment and you can go up and like put on different stuff and do all that sort of thing. Um, how was the flow from gameplay into combat? Well, the game is in first person, so like, Combat happens when you pull out your gun, basically. Obviously, they didn't do anything like fire their guns in like public spaces to do any of that stuff, but th there's a part in the demo where you walk down into like what kind of looks like a, what's the name of that famous like crosswalk in, in Tokyo? I forget the one, but it kind of looks like that. You walk out and it's like, I've, I've, I, I've never seen a first person game do uh, cities that well. Like if you did a side by side between that and GTA V, which is probably the best like first person city world if you play it, it looked nothing. Like it was, streets teeming with people walking around wearing crazy clothes listening to music talking to each other um uh doing all that stuff uh, did they explain what the cool stat does in the game i think that's the street cred i think that's what they called it um the uh it was played it was played with a uh, controller by the way i'm pretty sure start to finish maybe maybe not um the street cred thing i don't the, it's there was something with the jacket it said like plus five percent street cred which like gave you maybe a ten percent XP buff or something like that. I'm not really sure. Shibuya, that's the crosswalk, yeah. But they had like, there was all this stuff like, many, it reminded me of Witcher Quest where like, at any point you can kind of decide not to do something in a Witcher Quest and maybe it'll still have an impact later in the game. Um, and they had this whole part where uh, you could like, somebody gave you like these credits for this, to do this thing. And you could just not do the quest. You could just cash the credits if you wanted to. Um, but then they were like, if you do that, then those people aren't going to, uh, that will have effect. That will have an effect. It won't just like end that qu that like line. It will have an effect later on in the game. Um, so they had some sort of like emergent moment. Well, obviously not in the demo, it wasn't an emergent moment, but they were saying like, oh, at one stage, like 
somebody. What is happening outside? Somebody's like knocking a door down outside my house, outside this Airbnb. Oh, he's literally trying to like bang the door open. Oh, he's bringing a trash can downstairs. That's okay. Good. Sorry, I thought somebody's trying to break into this weird house. Um, yeah, sorry. They had a yeah. That was like an emergent moment. The car chase, um, or like a random encounter. I guess you probably call it. Uh, <clears throat> which was the you know we obviously set up for the demo, but they said like if you piss off these people, then that will happen. And um, it was cool. Uh, the facial animation stuff was really good. I thought the voice acting was a little bit. I'm not really sure if I got the vibe of that necessarily. Um, it could have been just the nature of the demo we saw as well, where we're dropped in with a character who you should already have some sort of um, uh, uh, relationship with or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Uh, are the environments NPCs influenced by any region, America, European? It's an American city for sure. Um, but it has that sort of like, you know, future Tokyo style that like most like um, Blade Runner kind of does, that kind of thing. <clears throat> how good do NPC models actually look in the game and how much variety? The cities were cool. They had like everything from like, you know, a bunch of kind of like Hare Krishna looking folks like with their hands. I can't do my hands together with their hands together, like walking down the street and like crazy cybernetic folks. There was like this whole group of people who were like way into modding themselves. So we're like just fucking crazy eyes and mouths that were like digital and they talked with weird voices and just the way that like I've never seen it like, like just to say the way that like when you had a mission, you know, you'd sit down on the couch and then the, you know, other f person would like come down and sit beside you and like get up in your face and kind of talk to you about stuff. And then you're doing like dialogue options while it's happening. It's like, it's really crazy. It was, uh, it was super interesting just how like detailed those moments were. Um, and then all the dialogue stuff seemed to really matter. Like it, the dialogue was like kind of like mass effecty or, or what's another, what's a better, more elegant, maybe sort of version of that. Like it's just something where, you could tell that you were going to like, <clears throat> there was moments you could like pull out your gun and shoot somebody, but you kind of didn't want to because the way that the world is set up, that you don't want to piss off certain like factions and things. So there was like a weight to it. Whereas in lots of games, you just pull out the gun and shoot them. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like, uh, there was a lot going on. It, it, f it felt like a first person GTA game with the sort of like internal level design of like an arcane, or Deus Ex game, but the combat was way more interesting than those games are. I feel like the, sh the projectile shooting, um, uh, the hacking uh, in that in the hacking there was no mini game. It was more of just of a choice. But like, who the fuck knows? The, the whole part of this game is about like modding your character and getting like weird stuff stuck in. And they were very much like this version of the character is like a fast version, but we have like you can like spec in tanky ways and like all these other different ways and stuff like that. So. Um, I haven't seen Altered Carbon, so I can't tell you, but it, it's it's that type of, like, um, like <clears throat> somewhere between a Blade Runner and a Judge Dredd kind of. I got a real Judge Dredd vibe off of it. I've never actually, like, I don't know much about the cyberpunk lore, so uh, pe people who are cyberpunk fans um, seem to think that this is quite in line with it, but it's it's kind of like, yeah, like, crazy, I don't know, post-futurism or something, like, Neo-Tokyo-style Americana and, like, everything's kind of glossy and clean but then there's this weird like subcurrent of like weird you know sex and they're they're pretty heavy on like the sort of sexual imagery and the violence i would say both of those are pretty front and center there's a part where you're basically carrying a naked woman like and like i'm not really I'm, again i'm not really sure i don't think i knew the vibe of the game before that happened so i was kind of like oh that's a bit that's a bit much, maybe you're like carrying this naked chick, um, who'd been like a so, uh, who's like I don't know. There was a bunch of these like folks who'd been like um, put in bathtubs and they're stealing their organs or something. Um, but uh, uh, that was the only thing about the game. The vibe of it, I wasn't quite sure with. But I think some of that might have been the fact that like when you drop into the middle of a game and you don't know the main character, you kind of don't necessarily empathize with them in that way. Like I'm not sure if I heard Geralt five hours into Witcher Three, but I think that. Uh, <clears throat> would I would I get his deal? But I I definitely do. As somebody mentioned, was the character as well defined as Geralt? I I didn't feel that way at all. But also, th this character is you. It kind of feels like like you choose gender, you choose your motivation, you choose how you look, you choose your like you wear your own clothes. Um, I don't know if there's different voices for. I mean, there's different voices for the genders. Obviously, well, I'm assuming there is. Um, uh, but I I don't think you chose another voice apart from that. But um, yeah, it looked like a whole. Uh, it looked like a different type of character system, less kind of like RPG specky and more kind of like, you know, when you play a role-playing game, 
probably like Cyberpunk. Like you play a tabletop game and it's more about the character's backstory than it is maybe about the numbers. It's like that. So imagine imagine like a combat sheet for doing a D&D game, but instead of them concentrating on, on the numbers, like the, the number sheet's gone and it's just the backstory stuff. That's kind of what it felt like. Um, but I don't know. Like this was a you know vertical slice of a game that's, that's, that's still in development. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. The fight was really interesting. The boss fight was cool. It kind of reminded me of Horizon Zero Dawn where you're shooting parts off this like mech suit to try and stop them from um, for the shield working. Like it was pretty crazy. Um, uh, Avocado Rocket, I'm not in Transylvania, sadly, sadly. Uh, so much of this sounds like modern Deus Ex should have been, my guess, release is 2020. Who knows? I have no idea. They're not talking about any of that. Was it like a giant boss? No, it was a dude that you were in a meeting with earlier who was really cool. It was a really cool character. And he got into like a, I don't know, like, you know, in Elysium, they have those suits where you kind of get into. They're like, <coughs> like probably, a, you know, like a mech suit that you wear, but like his front was kind of still kind of exposed, but he had like a shield he could pull out. Um, kind of like that, like a mini, mini kind of mech suit-y kind of thing. Um, it was cool. It was a really cool... Uh, I like all the different types of ammunition and the homing stuff and exosuit, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, where he was like stomping around and it was pretty cool. I liked it a lot. Um, I think that's all I can really like think of off the top of my head. You guys have any cool questions themselves? Did it remind you of the Griffin demo from Witcher 3 in any way? No, this, I, the, this is a weird demo because it doesn't really remind me of any demo I'd ever seen. Um, except that rage one where it made me feel like, oh, this world is like super interactive and, and interesting and broad. Uh, and I'm, maybe that's why I'm a little bit like, not skeptical, but just like d guarded about it all because um, the rage demo ended up being such, being such a guided vertical slice that was not at all what the game ended up feeling like. If, if the game that I saw today ends up being the game they release, it will be the mo probably the most significant first person shooter in like 15, 20 years. It's like, if it's what it is, it's 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 what I wanted games like The Division to be, where it was like the detail, the detail you get in games like The Witcher and Fallout. You don't necessarily get that stuff in in these games. So if they pull it off, I think uh, I think they made something really really special. So I hope so. Let's see. Sorry, is there Bioware dialogue trees? I'm assuming there's like you choose like one or two or three different options, but it changed. Like, sometimes there's two options, sometimes there's three, sometimes there was, like, three and another button for pull out your fucking gun. Like, it was crazy dynamic. It was never, it didn't seem very boring. It seemed, like, very um, interesting. Does it feel fresh and new? It does. It looks like no other game I've played. It looks like... <sighs> I don't know, man. You play first-person games, they always look, like, way, way more... Uh, I don't know, in your face and detailed, and it felt that way. So I'm trying to get through these questions. Uh, changing your... Uh, did it ever leave first-person? It did during the car stuff. <clears throat> um, but during all the dialogue scenes, it was still in first person. It was all like you're looking at, at the person. Uh, you see your character quite a lot in the character select screen. You see, I saw what she was wearing and how cool she looked. Um, and you're in there quite a bit in the character, in the aug augmented screen or whatever. Uh, what's gameplay looks close? Did it give you any idea of when I might release? No idea about release at all. Um, in terms of games it plays, uh, plays like, the third, the driving around the city stuff, which like you can just get out of the car at any stage and walk around if you want. Um, uh, I think, again, guarded demo, who fucking knows. Um, that looks very GTA 5-y. The first person of GTA 5 is the closest thing I have to this uh, with, with the level design of a, like an arcane Deus Ex game. Kind of like that. Um, when compared to Witcher 3, how much the CDP improved? It's a totally different type of game. It's crazy. It's like they've definitely... They're like taking the... RPG elements of those games that really work and the storytelling and wedging it into first person games and I've never seen anyone that's done that so it's 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 super unique that way did they keep to the city it looked like it was all in the city and that they said there was like six sections or something of the city but I don't know how many I saw maybe two um but there seemed like lots of stuff to look around how was the UI character health bars and skill bars they're pretty minimal I think a lot of that's work in progress I'm guessing um what did you think of CD Projekt Red hiding a message to fans in the trailer that was cool I liked all that stuff they know that people are going to frame by frame their stuff, so... Um. <coughs> what cyberpunk film would you liken it to? Weirdly enough, um, Ghost in the Shell, the new, the, the, the Charlize Theron version, which I remember being... I'm a huge Ghost in the Shell, uh, uh, like, anime fan, uh, and I wasn't looking forward to that movie, but I actually really liked that movie. I think it worked out. It looks a lot like that. Like, the daytime scenes where it's, like, clean roads... But, like, there's this dirty underbelly shit going on. It reminded me a lot of that. And, like, the sort of, like, you know the you know shots in Ghost in the Shell where it's, like, all the crazy big advertisements? Like, way more than 
the Blade Runner stuff, which is more like flat. This stuff's like a lot of the like big 3D stuff, like the like the model in Blade Runner. Um, that's what this kind of reminded me of. It was like there was lots of like big vistas and uh, futury looking stuff. It was pretty cool. Scott Johansson, what did I what did I say? I say, did I say who did I say? I say another blonde actor lady. Terrible of me. Any more questions? Get them in. My voice is almost going. E3 sickness. E3 sickness. I said Charlie's Theron. Oh, shit. Did you see driving? Yes, they drove around loads. Um, it was very, very cool. Uh, uh, what sort of combat are they going for? Picturing more stilted fallout shooting or something? No, it looked like... Uh, they had wall running like Titanfall in it. It had hacking stuff. It had... <coughs> you know, you were... The shooting was crazy. You're bouncing bullets off walls, bouncing custom main character. Yeah, it looks like it is. I think it might be a named character. I think it has a name, but you have like a. Um, uh, I I don't know if it's a totally new character or if you're building the main character and they have a story around that main character. But the all the like backstory stuff looked like you could tweak a lot of that. It's controversial with its themes. I think it could be. Yeah, it looked like they were getting into some weird stuff. Um, I'm going to Giant Bomb tonight. That's true. Do you feel like other character? Do you feel see enough of the character to make the character worth? To, like in a weird way, yeah. Like you don't see the character all that much, but you hear the character all the time, and you see a lot of like the like upgrade she got for her eye, for instance. I was looking through the eye, so I saw all the upgrade, and like she had an upgrade for the gun stuff, which looked looked like a four uh, grip was put in her into her hand underneath her skin. It was like a subdermal grip. So I felt like that the connection to the character felt from like her talking and interacting with people a lot more. Um, yes, I, the romance stuff. I mean, I think she had sex with a dude. You woke, you wake up and the dude's there and he walks away and then she gets up. Um, but they did say there was going to be like romances in it, or they said there was going to be. I think they they alluded to it. They said something very vague, like you will be able to interact with the humans of the world or something like that. Um, will I get an AO Air ESRB? Uh, no, nobody ever gets AO ESRBs because then they don't get to sell their video games. That's why you don't get those games, I think, right? Is AO the worst? What's the worst one? What's the one that people get that's like before it gets banned? Because AO is like you can only sell it in fucking porn shops, right? Something similar to VATS in Fallout? I don't think I saw any targeting thing, except for the homing bullets, which were pretty great. Would you say that the gameplay feels like a regular FPS or an immersive sim? Like somewhere in the middle. Like you've kind of, you've kind of hit it. It feels like... The frenetic nature of games like Titanfall with the sort of combat awareness of a immersive sim. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, your AO is the most extreme? Yeah, it wouldn't be AO. I mean, I saw a lady's breasts for a long period of this demo. There was a naked lady that you kept carrying around. They scanned her fucking brain to see who she was, and she had enough money to call an ambulance. So they called the ambulance from her and it debited her fucking credit card, and then the ambulance turned up, and the ambulance guys were for rich people, and turned up with guns and told you to get away from her. It was mental. I was like, what is this game? It looked really cool. Um, uh, yeah, so it was just full of, like, super unique moments it was almost too much i had to like after i was after it i was kind of like wow like i have to like think about what this is um it is definitely not they have taken the witcher and put it in the past it is they have taken the storytelling and like quest stuff of the witcher and put it in a totally different genre and they're like fixing first person games like they're going to do something interesting with first person narrative in an open world it looks so so cool any cool traversal mechanics there was like a double jump the character had, which was part of their upgrade tree that they had decided to do. They're like augmentations or whatever they're calling it in the game or whatever. The scale of the city was hard to tell, right? Because in the open areas I was in where I was walking, it felt like super big and super detailed, but I just couldn't believe that it was, you know? Because I've played games enough to know that, oh, if you walk two blocks that way, there's like a fucking invisible wall, right? You can't... So I wasn't able to play it myself and see that. If it's as big built up and open as the game makes it look like it is, then it will be like the craziest game world I've ever seen. But I always worry like that it might be something like, the best Delta I can think of is The Darkness, the first The Darkness game, like the Jackie Estacado game, where you'd, where like, there was open areas, but they were connected via subway lines. Remember that? So you'd go into the subway, you'd go to another hub area and you'd come up and then those were like believable areas, right? So I don't know if it's like that because everywhere they went, they basically went either driving or on an elevator 
So I guess they could be like obfuscating load screens in the elevator, maybe in the, I don't know. But it felt like it was an open world at night. It, it was all during the day. The whole demo was during the day. It started indoors though. And like, so it had like indoor, like it's one of these mega cities where you go down deep enough then it like gets super dark. Um, does the city feel like a cross between DSX map and GTAs? Kind, it feels like an immersive sim in an open world. Yeah, so kind of like very well structured levels, very well structured levels that you're accessing via this open world. You know, like GTA, this is, to me, this is why I think I'm happy that it's first person because you cannot play GTA. Like GTA does not really feel good in first person when you go indoors. And that's the reason why that game doesn't go indoors very often. This game is indoors a lot. And then it has that feeling of like you emerge. I like kind of when you come out of a fallout bunker. It's like, whoa, it's fucking crazy. Uh, how big of a graphical hit will it need to take to be on current gen consoles? Um, I don't know. It felt like it's early, right? So, and it was running. So obviously they, they weren't doing previs crazy stuff or anything. Um, it looked really good, but it didn't look, it didn't look like it couldn't be done. It looked like, you remember, remember how blown away we all were by like the division when they first showed that? And obviously division ended up not necessarily looking that good, but like it looked pretty close to that. Um, so I can't, I don't know. Like, I guess they're not talking about when it's out. But, it, I, I mean, I think we have the next console generation for at least another four or five years. So, I, I, I doubt the game is this far along and it's not coming out. I have no idea, but I would imagine that they're going to put it out on these. I think, I can't tell what they were playing on because they're playing with a controller. But, like, it didn't look that crazy that they couldn't necessarily do it on this stuff. But I, it's all just, you know, guesswork on, 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 my, on my head. Appropriate for VR? Maybe? I don't know. A lot of it was like first-person storytelling where they were looking around two characters, so I'm not really sure if that would work. And maybe it would, I don't know. Um, do you see any melee combat? Yeah, they used the spiky hand stuff. Um, chop some dude's head off. It was really gnarly. The combat was really good. I'm, the thing that I took away from the most of it was I really liked the gunplay. Shooting bullets off walls was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Because <laughs> you could see the angle it was going to take. It was like Peggle when you get that up... When you get that, uh, upgrade and you can see where the first bounce is going to be they show you where the bounce of the bullets is so that as you're scanning the wall so it's kind of like yep, yep that's gonna hit him and then you saw like hit off the wall and them getting all fucked up um yeah so i thought the combat was not designed was super good uh, all right i think that's it. two or three more questions and send them over and i'll and i'll do my best yesterday stories rumor were saying new xbox in 2020 so you never know uh who knows Maybe new Xbox gets announced in 2020. Is the car a character? Does it have a personality? The car that I drove was my, not my car, it was my friend's car. They sort of alluded to the fact that you could buy your own, perhaps. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, there was, uh, there was, I think there was loot. I'm not sure if there was loot. Uh, yeah, there was attributes on the clothing. It was very much like a, your street cred goes up. Did it ever seem like RPG elements would take precedence over natural FPS? Um, it, sorry, the character creator thing I missed. Could you say that again? Um, the RPG stuff looked... Like, the, there were whole parts of the game that you could do non-violently, it seemed, if you managed to talk your way through it or whatever. Um, any people in the color in the city? Yeah, it looked pretty diverse. Um, but there was also, like, lots of people, like, wearing very odd clothing where you couldn't really see. There was, like, obfuscating where they were and stuff. Um, and then, like, a lot of, like, who's techie and who's non-techie, that sort of stuff. Music jump out at all? Yeah, music is pretty good. I don't know who it was, though. Um, length of the game longer than Witcher 3? God, who knows? That, I mean, that's, like... That's the question you ask when the game is out. Like, who knows? I'm guessing they their CD Projekt's thing has always been they make games too long. So <laughs> they make games, they aim for a game that's 50 hours long and then they make a game that's 200 hours long. So um, I would expect them to do something like that. Uh, is the character creator like pre-made faces or were the sliders sculpting like Bioware? We, I don't know because we, it wasn't the start of the character creator that we saw. Um, so I don't actually know. Um, I didn't see any motorcycles necessarily either. Uh, for that question. Um, but it seemed like a lot of people... I've never seen... It's like... First person worlds. I played a lot of Oblivion recently. For the Elder Scrolls thing. And you go into town in Oblivion. And there's like six people. But it felt like it was millions of people at the time. Um, this reminded me of like... Oh. When you play GTA first person. GTA 5. It doesn't really seem like there's that many pe people around. It's like a Tuesday morning maybe. This felt like a Saturday fucking afternoon. There was people everywhere walking into each other doing stuff talking sounds music like smells from coffee shops like it felt like that it felt like 
life is happening here. It looked really cool. Um, can you call the car back? I only ever saw them walking towards, they never went too far from the car in any situation. Uh, yeah, it was cool. It was really interesting. Very fascinating world, fascinating gameplay type of game, uh, type of demo, like new stuff, sort of mashing genres together in a way that looks really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm super looking forward to seeing more of it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's coming out anytime soon. I don't know, who knows? It's a pretty crazy, crazy big thing. Um, did it feel like knowing a lot about the tabletop experience? experience? I did not think about it whatsoever, so I cannot tell you. Can you pick up miscellaneous items and mess around with the environments? Um, they didn't do any of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if you could. Um, and yeah, uh, there's a bunch of like really good video game websites like GameSpot and IGN and stuff. We did like proper breakdowns of the hour long thing. So you can go check it out. Um, over there, they might have more structured callbacks to this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to do this to, to give a little update. Where was E3? E3 was in LA, my friend, like every single year. And it's almost over for me. I'm not going in tomorrow, so I'm just hanging out with Giant Bomb tonight, relaxing after a hard two days of putting out all those no, uh, documentaries for uh, Bethesda. And uh, yeah, that's it, I think. One or two more questions. Do you feel like CD Brew addressing the massive fan upset by being FPS? Fans, let me tell you something. <laughs> This reminds me of the Fallout 76 stuff. Gamers do not understand, the vast majority of gamers do not understand game design and why they enjoy the games they like. So whenever I see massive amounts of gamers telling CD Projekt to make a third person, I want them all to shut the fuck up. Because this is a crowd of people, 200 odd people who make video games every day of the year doing something new and innovative and interesting in a genre in an industry where all the big non you know public companies want to do is make the same shit over and over and over and over again so when i hear like people saying fallout 6 shouldn't be multiplayer i fucking want to tear those people's heads off let this crowd of people who have made the same game for the past 15 fucking years morrowind oblivion skyrim fallout 3 fallout 4 they've ostensibly made the same thing and improved on it, and it's and I love all those games. I'm not shit talking Bethesda, but like let's make let them make a multiplayer game. Like let them make something new. Let CD Projekt people who've made third person weird Slavic role playing games for the past twelve years make a fucking future first person role playing like totally. So it felt like a good game. I think I'm really happy that they're doing something interesting. Third, first person is 100% the right. Just from playing, just from seeing the demo, I'm like, I would not want to play this in third person. It's like, it's there's too many weird internal dark places to have like this in third person. It just, that sense of like Im uh, immersion, you just don't necessarily have. So I think I'm really happy that it's, it works, it totally works as a first person game. I'm, I, when you see what they're doing in it, it's like, oh yeah, like I don't, I don't need to see the back of someone's, I don't see the ponytail. I love girls' ponytail. Although I shaved it off and did that cool mohawk in The Witcher 3, but uh, I did, didn't, don't necessarily need to see this in, in this game. So, all right, we'll leave it there. Hope to answer your question. Sorry if that was bitchy. Um, I just don't, I hate I hate how weirdly, like, know-it-all game gamers. Uh, there's one thing I've learned over the past 20 months of previously working at a website and telling people how games should be made and then going around to developers for the past 20 months and actually learning how games are made, it's that I know nothing about how games are made and we should leave the experts to do their job. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, all right, I'm done. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to go relax for a couple of hours before Giant Bomb. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for all the kind words about the Noclip uh, Bethesda stuff. Um, it's gone down really well, and we didn't leak Fallout 76, so I'm really happy about that. Or we didn't leak Starfield, or we didn't leak The Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah, still in the job. Have a good day. Uh, I love you all, and goodbye. Goodbye.